Hey everyone and welcome back to our ice cream beginner blender tutorial series here in Blender 2.8. This part we're going to be learning how to use particles to instance a whole bunch of sprinkles across our ice cream cone here. So in any sort of 3D film when you've seen all kinds of rocks or trees or something, those aren't hand placed one by one, they're always instanced using something like a particle system that we can do right inside of Blender. This allows us to add many objects across the scene, which would be really impossible to do by hand. So it's a lot of fun and it does a lot of the work for us, which is really cool. So I hope you guys are excited to try that out yourselves in this Blender 2.8 tutorial series. And before we get started with this tutorial, I'd also like to thank Storyblocks for sponsoring this tutorial series on the channel for you guys. So for starters, let's go ahead and create some sprinkles that we can add over the top of our ice cream cone here. So for this, I'm gonna place my cursor over to the side here, and then we go Shift A to bring up the Add menu, and we're gonna add a cylinder here. The cylinder doesn't have to be quite as big as it is, so I'm gonna change the settings right here, bring it down to 16 vertices, and then I'm just going to hit S and scale it down quite a bit. Something like that. If I hit the period key on my number pad, it will jump my viewport right to that cylinder and I can rotate around now with my middle mouse wheel. What I wanna do first is I wanna scale this sprinkle up to be quite a bit taller. So I'm gonna go S and Z and we'll just drag that up a bit to about the size of a sprinkle. And uh, I'm sure you guys know what sprinkles look like. They're basically little tiny worms. So these sprinkles, as you can see in my finished results here, are going to be different colors and a little bit different sizes. Um, but basically just simple little cylinders that have a little bit of curve to them maybe. Nothing too crazy though. So with our cylinder here, all I'm going to do now is tab into edit mode and add a little bit of curve to it. So I'm going to go control R, add one of those loop cups just to the center of our object here, and then hit G and just move it a little bit. So we have a little bit of curve there. And then what I want to do is I want to round the ends of our um, sprinkle here off a bit. So what I can do is I can bevel the end of our sprinkle here by going Control B and then moving my mouse wheel will allow me to add bevel to the end of this. And then scrolling with my middle mouse button, I can add in another ring of vertices there. And I really only want a little bit because I'm going to be using this object a lot and all these vertices will be adding up in our scene if we make this too high poly. But I'm just gonna go with something like that to kind of round off the end of our sprinkle there nicely. And I'll do the same thing on this end. Just grab that whole edge with Alt right click and then Control B and add some bevel to the end of that sprinkle. Perfect, and now all we're gonna do is add one more sprinkle. I'm gonna scale it and pull it over. And this one's gonna be a nice little short guy. So I'm gonna scale it down a little bit and then I'm gonna grab that middle ring there and pull it in so this one's a little bit less rounded. And that's all I need to do. Now I can just hit W and shade smooth on both of these guys. And our sprinkles are ready to be added to our scene. Very cool. So as you can see, the origin point when I'm in front view, which we talked about a little bit in the last video, this point right here, we want this to be on the edge of our sprinkle because the origin point is gonna be how the objects are placed on top of our object here. They're gonna be placed right at that origin point. And because I want the sprinkle to be visible, I'm gonna pull the origin point all the way to the edge there on both of these. So I'm just grabbing the whole mesh and moving it so we have that little orange dot all the way towards the left side there of our sprinkle. And that will be perfect for instancing them with particles across our cone here. All right, so switching over to our particle settings right here, this is the particle settings right below the modifiers. Now before I add a particle system in, I'm gonna make sure that I have my circle selected there, as you can see right here. And now I can add in a new particle system by clicking that plus key there. And in Blender, we have two different types of particle settings. An emitter, which gives you particles that kind of bounce around the scene and that can be used for animating things like that. And a hair, which allows uh, particles to be more stagnant, which is actually gonna be what we want for this as we want them just to be locked in their position on our, uh, our mesh here. Hair is also obviously used for hair uh, physics in Blender, but it can also be used for things like this. And so we're gonna choose hair. Now, as you can see, the particles are being really wonky there. The hair is sticking out all over the place. And that's because we have to assign our modifiers before we can add the particles to our mesh. So you wanna make sure that you're pretty happy with the way your, your ice cream is flowing before you do this because you won't be able to make these changes as easy in the future. So I'm just gonna kind of make sure that I like the way my ice cream is looking 
And if you're happy with the way your ice cream is looking, then you can, let me just pull it up just a little bit. Yeah, nice little swirl at the top. Oh, never complained about that. So I'm gonna jump to the modifiers tab, select our ice cream cone here. And what you can do if you're not sure you're 100% uh, happy with them, is you can grab both your circle and your busier curve here and shift D them. By hitting shift D, it makes a duplicate of them. So just moving this to the side here, I'm gonna also delete the particle settings off of this because we don't want them on this either. And then I'm just gonna hit H and hide both of the duplicated curve and ice cream. So that just makes it handy. If you ever decide you wanna make changes, you can go back to your duplicated mesh and make the changes. So here, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna apply these modifiers, not the subdivision surface, but the array and the curve. So starting with the array, I'm just gonna hit apply. And you can see that right away allows the particles to go everywhere they want. And then I'm also going to apply the curve. And that allows the particles to be crazy all over the place, which is exactly what we're looking for. So now I can jump back to our particle settings and we can choose the object to be instanced to be our sprinkle instead of our hair. So to do that, we're gonna to wanna to scroll down to our render here. And right now you can see it's being rendered as path, which is essentially hair. And we're gonna change that to be a collection. And this collection is going to be our sprinkles. But we need to quick make that collection as we didn't assign these to be part of a collection. And collections are used to group objects together for things just like this, where you can add a handful of groups to a collection, and then you can access that whole group of collection, or objects you could say, and use them as we're doing here to say, instance them across our ice cream. So to make a collection, it's really easy. You just grab both of your objects there, and go Control G. This adds them into a new collection. You can see the name is right here. We could just name these Sprinkles if we wanted. So it's nice and easy to remember. And now, if we go back to our hair settings here, and with collection selected here, we can choose our instance collection. And this instance collection is gonna be those sprinkles that we just made. So choosing that, you can see we now have sprinkles added all over our mesh. And uh, right now, they don't look like they're landing very naturally. They actually look like a bunch of little maggots on your ice cream, which is extremely gross. So we're gonna wanna change the rotation and scale of these a little bit. So to do this, we can go ahead and change the scale randomness here, give them a little bit of random size, and then the scale themselves, you can go ahead and tweak. And then the rotation is gonna give us a lot of better looking results for these sprinkles. So we're gonna choose advanced right there, and then you can see we have this rotation option. If you click rotation there, we can choose the orientation axis, and we want these to be from velocity here to normal. If you choose normal, you can now choose the randomize option here, and you can rotate those sprinkles around a bit. And then you can also use the phase option here to spin them around. And then if you use the randomized phase, you can get even more randomized rotation in those particles, which just start making them look very naturally dispersed, which is what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna choose something like that. And now I might just wanna make the scale a little bit bigger on these particles, but that's looking very nice. So now what we can do is particles landing like in the crevice here and stuff isn't very natural as you usually just sprinkle the sprinkles on top of the ice cream. So what we can do is we can add in what is called a vertex group, which allows us to assign certain parts of the mesh to have the particles on and certain parts to have the particles not on. So to do this, it's very simple. All we need to do is jump from object mode to weight paint. And right here you can see we have a basic brush selected and everywhere we paint is gonna add a specific amount of weight to our object. So I'm just gonna control Z that real quick. And what I'm gonna do is to make it look like these were naturally dispersed on our ice cream cone, is I'm just gonna hit seven to go to our top view. And then the shortcut key to make your brush a different size is F. So you can use F to change the size of your brush or if you hit N to bring up your properties, so you can see we have a tool option over here you can change your size here as well. So you can either hit F or you can use the setting right there. And then it's Shift F to change the strength amount. I'm just gonna leave the strength amount to be one. And now in top view, what I can do is I can click and just kind of add a weight to the top of our ice cream cone. So this is kind of gonna give you a natural amount of weight because everywhere it's adding right now is only going from the top and you're not gonna get as much sprinkles inside those crevices, which look pretty unrealistic in my opinion. So as you can see here that the weight is not adding it to the inside here, it's only adding it to everything that's visible. And this is gonna allow us to avoid having sprinkles 
being placed in the inside there. Now, if you want to see the sprinkles being updated in real time with their new placement, what we can do is if we scroll over in our particle settings here, as you can see we have the vertex group option here. You drop that down, and under the density option, we can choose that group that we just made, and voila, our particles are now being added everywhere our weight paint is. So everywhere it's blue, we have no particles, but everywhere it's orange or red, we have particles being added. And that's looking really nice for our sprinkles. And you can go around and add a little bit more any way you want. And that's just going to add more sprinkles to that area. Now, if you didn't want particles in an area that they're showing up, like maybe right here, you can click on this to change your brush. And we're just going to choose Subtract. And this allows you to basically erase where the particles are being placed by clicking and dragging. And there you can see we just got rid of those particles there. And so if I jump back to Object Mode, you can see we have our sprinkles all over our ice cream cone. And the last thing to do is you can see that some of them are always being added on top of each other, and that's not what we want. And that's because of how they're being emitted onto our mesh. So we can change that here in the particle settings as well. We're going to choose source, and where you can see it's set to jittered right here, we're going to change that to be random. And that just lets our particles be placed everywhere more randomly instead of being placed on a sort of jittered pattern, which gives a more natural random amount of sprinkles, and uh, yeah, your sprinkles are looking really cool. So this is a way to add a whole bunch of objects to your scene without needing to hand place them. I mean, placing these sprinkles by hand would literally be crazy. And you can see that with a particle system, we can just do it in a matter of minutes and have particles all over the place, which looks really, really nice in my opinion. So that is how you add the sprinkles. And if I jump back to object mode here, you can see that they're looking really nice. Uh, maybe we want to increase the scale of them just a little bit more there, and then increase the random scale a bit as well. And there's our sprinkles on our ice cream cone.